Hello everybody and welcome to another Archetype Guide video. Today we are starting five videos in this Archetype series to discuss the blessing and curse archetypes that are in the Innsmouth Conspiracy cons uh, expansion. Uh, a nice benefit of everything we're going to talk about in this video and the next four videos is that all the cards are in the entire Innsmouth Conspiracy cycle, so you can just, if you want to play these archetypes, you buy that cycle. And if you have that cycle, you kind of have to play those archetypes if you only have that cycle. Um, Travis, I'm going to actually explain what this one does, and you're going to do in the next video, so sorry for saying your name. The goal of the Guardian Blessings archetype <laughs> is to uh, take advantage of the blessed tokens. So the blessed tokens are when you draw the token from the cup, you get plus two for that test, and then you draw another token. Um, you, this can cascade into multiple blessings, and it feels uh, sometimes bad, to just get a lot of multiple blessings when you don't need them. But luckily this archetype has a lot of um, effect and ability to circumvent those issues by sealing your blessed tokens. And then it also takes advantage of the blessed tokens by then adding them and also by giving them additional effects or additional uses than just here's a blessed token. So on that, Travis, why don't you talk about these first cards? Yeah. So the first card on this archetype is Sister Mary. Uh, she is the one that is clearly designed to work with this archetype. Being able to play all the blue cards and then a hand, the handful of purple cards that care about the blessed tokens. She starts the game with two blessings in the bag. and At the end of the round, she adds a blessing to the bag. So if you are considering to play this, uh, especially with a lot of people, uh, she's a good choice for it. Our first card here is the Blessed Blade. Costs three to play. Takes up one hand slot. It's an action. If it's ready, you can fight. You get plus one punch for the attack, and if you reveal a bless or the Elder Sign token during the attack, it deals plus one damage. And before revealing Chaos tokens for the attack, you may exhaust the Blessed Blade to add one blessed token to the Chaos bag. Excuse me. So this can uh, help up your count of tokens in the bag at the cost of one getting to you not getting to use it further in that turn unless you have something like Galvanize, which might be neat. Um. This card is like a little bit unreliable at the start, and you should not treat it as a... You're not going to consistently get plus one damage off it until you have Favor of the Sun in your deck, which is a huge enabler for the archetype. So, uh, Our second card here is Blessing of Isis. This one is an experience card. Three experience, two to play. It doesn't take up any slots, and as a reaction, when a second blessed token is revealed during a single test of your location, you can exhaust Blessing of Isis to cancel that token and treat it as if it were an Elder Sign token instead. Then you return them both to the Chaos Bag after this test ends. Um, again, this one isn't super good when you've got a low amount of tokens in the bag, but as you get more and more, and people are drawing them more, this is a fantastic way to get extra value out of them while also maintaining the number of them you have in the bag. Yeah. Our last card here is the Book of Psalms. This is the other uh, hand slot assigned to Sister Mary. Uh, three to play, takes up the hand slot, has four secrets, and as an action you can spend a secret to heal one horror from investigate your location and add two blessing tokens to the chaos bag. Uh, in a uh, Sister Mary deck, this is an okay hand slot card. Um, it, it, it juices up, get, you can put a lot of blessing tokens in the bag real fast with this. For example, with the right of uh, sanctification that we'll see later. You can spend two actions to like heal some, up someone's horror, put the blessing tokens in the bag, and then play the right as your third one to seal them onto it. Um, it it's just actually a really solid level zero enabler. Uh, it's great as a support card in Sister Mary decks, and then it even has a place if you're not playing Sister Mary, because most other guardians have low sanity, and that sanity or that horror healing can actually be pretty relevant for someone like. Uh, Mark, who's only got five brain, or um, Zoe, who's got six. Yeah, yeah. Brian, I'll pass these ones to you. All, All right. right, we've got a Rite of Sanctification. <laughs> this is a zero-costed asset. Seal up to five blessed tokens on Rite of Sanctification. If, if it has none, you, you discard. You discard. Uh, as a reaction, when an investigator at your location plays a card, you can exhaust Rite of Sanctification and release one of the Chaos Tokens sealed on it. Reduce the cost of that card by two. So this is just a economy option for the, the Blessing Heavy Investigator. Uh, you can also use it to reduce the cost of your teammates cards, which is, to me, where this card starts to get neat. Because uh, other, otherwise it's like kind of a weird 
kind of kind of a weird emergency catch. It, it's actually really strong for the blessing archetype because yeah. uh, if you look at the guardian ones, most of the good cards are assets, and you're gonna need a lot of money to play them. Yeah, yeah no, I like I I'm not uh, I'm not trying to say it's bad or anything. I'm just like. Oh need, no, that was for the viewers, not for you. I know you know this card's good. <laughs> Uh, next up, we've got Holy Rosary, level 2. Uh, it's a two-costed asset, takes up your necklace slot, gives you plus one brain, and as a reaction effect, after you pass a brain test on a treachery, you can exhaust it to add two blessing tokens to the chaos bag. It also soaks two horror. Uh, this, I know this card is... It is a purple card, but this one is... was. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's not a, it's not a very reliable way to add chaos, to add the tokens to the bag. That happens mostly as kind of a side effect of playing the game. Uh, it's not going to happen when you want it to, but uh, sometimes you just get them for free. It's it's not the most reliable way, but from all the ways I've added blessed tokens to the token bag, this is the one that feels the best. I actually think this card is like insanely good. It's so good. I mean. Number one, holy like guardians rosary. don't use their accessory slot. Yeah, they already have high brain, so buffing your brain up to like four or five is very good and gives you a good chance of actually passing the the willpower tests. And, and then you get benefited you pass for them, passing a treachery, which yeah. is great. And anyway. it soaks horror. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I also yeah. Th this isn't even talking about how much I enjoy the cross class assets, which I think we need to see more of in this game. Like yeah. the multi-class ones? Uh, no, no the, the ones that when they upgrade to a different ones, color. Yeah, 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 yeah. upgrading into a different color. Yeah, I think that's yeah. really cool as well. I, I would agree with you. Uh, next up, we got the Holy Spear, which is a level 5 weapon. It costs 4 to play. As an action, you can fight. You get plus 2 punch and deal plus 1 damage for this attack. When you initiate this ability, you may release a blessing token sealed on the Holy Spear. As an a or as an action, we can search the Chaos Bag for up to two blessed tokens and seal them on the Holy Spear. Fight, we get plus four and deal plus two damage for this attack. Takes up two hand slots. But uh, I think this does a re pretty reasonable job of filling the big weapon fantasy mm -hmm. uh, that I'm sure many of you have had when you sat down to play a blue character. God, I just, yeah. It just it just does a bunch of damage and it does it pretty reliably. Yep. Uh, you even get to put the put the tokens back sometimes. Yeah, yeah, because it doesn't return them yeah. to the token pool; it releases yeah. them. So that's sick. you expect yeah, and, a lot for experience, and this card does deliver. Yeah. 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 And all, like also, at no point does it uh, does it exhaust for its effects. Mm -hmm. So it is kind of just like machete eat your heart out. Yeah, uh, it's just better. But I mean, well, as, it, takes, as, it takes up two hand slots. Yeah, as Travis said, for a five experience, two hand slot yeah. weapon, it better be freaking good. Be. Yeah, like it has to compete with like flamethrower and like gun. So mm -hmm. uh, then we're not, we got Nephthys. Nephthys. She's a three costed level four ally, who gives us plus one brain as a reaction effect. Whenever one or more blessing tokens would be removed from the chaos bag. During a skill test, we can seal them on Nephthys instead. As a lightning bolt, we can exhaust Nephthys and either release re-bless tokens sealed on her, or we can uh, return them to the cup. Or the, sorry, not the cup, the token pool. Like, the whatever box or mm -hmm. thing you use to hold the tokens that aren't in play. Yeah, uh, it, they don't go to the bag. Yeah, yeah, no, they don't. Uh, yeah, so we can we can either either put the tokens back, or we can put them back in the cup, like remove from the game to deal two damage to an enemy at our location. Uh, I think she soaks two and two. She seems fine. Uh, plus brain is always good, and either one of the uh, either one of the options on her seem good. Mm -hmm. Like either you get to keep your tokens in the bag, like because you don't want to remove them for reasons. Or you get to do damage without a test or an action. Yeah, and I, I think what's also really nice with Nethus is the fact that 
it makes your bless tokens do more than just plus two, which is nice, right? Because mm -hmm. they're not reliable without uh, favor of the sun, as Travis was saying. So having them, if a case where someone, uh, your teammate grabs uh, two bless tokens out there, now you can be like, hey, Nethys, hold on to these, and then we're gonna d deal two damage to an enemy later. And like, that is really nice. All right, we got Sacred Covenant, which is like a juicy must buy of this archetype. It's a permanent, uh, so it's always in play. Two, two experience, you can have one covenant per deck as a reaction. After an investigator at any location performs the reveal chaos token step of a skill test, you exhaust Sacred Covenant and return any number of blessed tokens revealed during this test to the chaos bag, ignoring their modifiers for this test. So if you need those blessed tokens to pass the test, don't return those ones because it will put you to a failing number. However, if you ever reveal enough blessed tokens that don't actually help you pass the test and they're just there wasting space and Nethys isn't in play, you could just say, hey, Sacred Covenant, let's put those back into the cup. This is ensuring that you actually get use out of your blessed tokens as opposed to just wasting them. It's a very high priority buy for this archetype. Shield of Faith is a two cost asset, takes up a spell slot, two experience, commits for guts. Seal up to five blessed uh, tokens. If Shield of Faith has no token sealed on it, discard it. As a reaction, when an enemy attacks an investigator location, exhaust Shield of Faith and release a Chaos token sealed here, cancel that attack. It's Guts. Oh, no, it's Dodge. Sorry, I had Guts in my brain. It's Dodge. It's um, also Guts. It is also, it technically is also Guts, so I'm not <laughs> wrong. But it's up to five Dodges, which is really nice. Um, when This is the question I always like to ask you guys. What would be the number of that you'd want to see on this like baseline that you're like, this is good? Like three. Yeah, three. Yeah. Yeah, I was also going to say three. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a dodge that cost me two in an action. Like, it's got to be three dodges. Yeah. Sick. Hand of Fate here. This is actually just dodge. Uh, it's a three cost well, event. Sorry, it, didn't, sorry, it doesn't cost you the cards too, though. Yeah, it doesn't. It does not cost yeah. you the cards. That is that is worth noting. Mm -hmm. Like, I wouldn't feel bad about playing this for two dodges. Like, if I needed it that turn or someone needed it that turn, but I would try to get three. Yeah. Luckily, as Travis was saying, with like with Rite of Sanctification and all the other options, it's actually pretty easy to put tokens in the bag to seal what you need, right? Um, if you just like can set it up, take a bit of time to get that going. Yeah, yeah. I just I just wouldn't play it preemptively as like two dodges or less. Yeah, or dodge. yeah. Like, mm -hmm. um, hand of fate. A little more. Three cost event commits for a brain and a fist. Fast play when an enemy attacks an investigate location. Cancel that attack. Then add bless tokens to the chaos bag. Equal to the attacking enemy's total combined damage and horror values. Do you know what this is sick against? Enemies that deal a lot of damage and horror. Um, this one's, yeah, it, it stops an attack and adds blessed tokens. If you're looking for that in your deck, this is a great way of um, doing that and not taking damage. And then, you know, getting blessed tokens. Uh, when you're upgrading, I, I think that this is a fine, personally for me, like this could become your shield of faith as you upgrade. Um, even though like they kind of sit in a similar space, they have different function and like ultimately a different use, but just a path you could consider if you are looking at upgrading. This one ironically gets better the longer you keep it in your deck, despite it being a level zero card, right? Yeah, yeah, that is very true, especially in the later campaigns yeah. when they deal a buttload of damage, like a certain <clears throat> special thing we fought today. Yeah, just like now, I'll take uh, six plus tokens, please. Yeah, that would, that would <laughs> feel great. Uh, Halo? Spell and a bless, three cost, three experience, commits for a brain and a wild. As initial cost to play Hallow, return a total of 10 bless tokens to the token pool from the chaos bag or sealed on cards in play. Remove one doom from any card in play. So uh, having 10 tokens in play or sealed sounds daunting. And honestly, it is, and also sometimes it isn't. But more often than not, it is. Um, the effect, however, is incredibly powerful to remove one doom in play. Um, so this is one, like, I mean, you could like maybe just be kind of cheeky with it and have a, a Rite of Sanctification Shield of Faith deck and just like never use them. They're just there to be batteries for your Hallows. Um, that is a way you could do, but also you could just like hope it You don't happens. even need them. You can just have Nephthys suck yeah. up your blessed tokens. Yeah, exactly. Like, there's ways to go about it. This isn't one that you kind of just, like, expect it to happen. You need to do some planning and setup for it. But the effect is powerful I think if it, it does trigger. 
I think it's a neat card for like it's a fine card for three experience in these decks where you can like actually just sit there and let Nephthys soak up mm -hmm. your extra blessed tokens. And you know, if you ever happen to have the opportunity to play this, you're like, yeah, sure, we'll buy ourselves another turn. Yeah, it's basically yeah. canceling ancient evils, which is good. And then if you're you're like, I need these for other things, you know, it's guts. Yeah, and like yeah, it's like a good one of right. Like you just ha you don't expect it to happen, but if it ever does, you're like sick. The arts is nice too. Yeah. Travis, go for it. Uh, this is... Man, I don't know what these ones do. <laughs> Alright, I can, I can take them. I know these ones. Yeah, uh, Radiant Smite, Fight. It's a one cost, one experience event. Uh, you may use your brain instead of your fist for this attack. When you initiate this attack, search the Chaos Bag for up to three Blessed Tokens and seal them here. For each Blessed Token sealed on Radiant Smite, you get plus one skill value and deal plus one damage for this attack. If this attack defeats the attacked enemy, return the sealed tokens to the to token pool. Otherwise release them. So, uh, you can get up to four damage with this card, and then uh, up to a three increase to your skill, which can be either Brain or Fist, depending on what's higher. Um, and then if you defeat the enemy, uh, those token pools, the tokens get to return to the token pool, but if you don't, so if this is like your first shot on a five health enemy, all those blessed tokens go back into the bag. So this one's like kind of like in a weird space where like, if you have to use it to kill an enemy, it's not the end of the world, because you can just put those tokens back in. Um, however, if this can just be, like, your first shot against the enemy, Radiant Smite is nice and powerful for that. Righteous Hunt here is a one-cost, one-experience event. You can engage. Choose an enemy up to two locations away, move one location at a time to that enemy's location, engage it, and add blessed tokens to the Chaos Bag equal to the enemy's horror value. So it's a one-experience card. Uh, it gives you some mobility, some free mobility uh, as part of this, and then also an engage, and then also some blessed tokens if the enemy has a horror value. Remember, damage and horror value are separate, so that is just the brain icon's little boop boop on uh, yeah. the enemy. Yeah, hey, Travis, guess who's back? Because it's, it's Lita. It is Lita Chandler. It's Lita Chandler. I thought it was going to be shady. <laughs> uh, we got Manipulate Destiny. This is a one experience two, uh, sorry, a one cost two experience event that commits for a wild. Reveal tokens from the chaos bag until you reveal a curse, uh, auto fail, a blessing, or an elder sign token. If you revealed a curse or an auto fail, deal two damage to an enemy or location. If you uh, a blessed or an elder sign token, heal two damage from an investigator or ally asset at your location. This action does not provoke attacks of opportunity. Um, so with favor of the sun and favor of the moon, you can like stack the odds. Like, I mean, not stack the odds. You can choose what result you want. Uh, otherwise, just uh, roll the dice, right? Have some fun. See what happens. Yeah. yeah. This card is, like, pretty neat. <laughs> There's some weird... Per no, I'm not going to get into it. I'm not <laughs> One thing I like about this card is the name Manipulate Destiny, where it's not actually describing what you do. It's what they want no. you to do. Yeah. Yeah, they're, like, saying, yeah. don't just have... Yeah, you manipulate this yeah. card. Yeah. Is yeah, that... for this one, I, I don't think that this is, like, it is an option for your Blessing decks, and it, it's here because, like, you can play Investigators that pl can play Guardian Blessings alongside Curse tokens. Mm -hmm. I think it's better not if you can do the damage, because the healing is, like, it's fine, don't get me wrong, but it's, it's not as good as some of the other things you could be spending your experience on. If you're just doing, like, basically a pure blue Blessing deck. Yeah, I think it does depend on what the ally you're healing looks like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if it's because you probably you don't sick. really want to be healing an investigator. Yeah, not really. No, that means like it's it's fine if it if it means if it means they don't die this turn. Like yeah, I sure, mm -hmm. that's not the worst thing ever. Uh, last one on this page, we got Temp Fate, zero cost event commits for a wild fast play during any lightning bolt window. Add three curse tokens to the chaos bag, then add three blessed tokens to the chaos bag and draw one card. Not much here to say except a way to add curse and bless tokens. Uh, the neutral cards we're including in all these guides just because they fit with the archetype. I know you can say, but Justin, you didn't use other neutral cards in the past. And to that, I say, true. Travis, <laughs> why don't you take this, this last correct. one? Actually, yeah, no, we're this is why brain, we're including cause... the neutral ones is exactly because favor of the sun for the blessed token, blessed decks, and favor of the moon for the cursed decks are so important to them. Yeah, uh, it's actually kind of a shame that they came out so late in the cycle, but. So this one is two to play, costs one experience, put in your deck, it's fast, doesn't take any action. You seal up to three blessed tokens, and if there are no tokens on it, you discard it. 
as a reaction, when you reveal a token from the bag, you can exhaust Favor of the Sun to draw a Bless instead. You will still you will have to keep drawing other things, but like you got the blessed, which is needed for a lot of your yeah, abilities. which is what you want. Yep. Um, this is just it's just a battery. Yeah. It ensures that your blessed blade deals extra damage. Uh, it works for like hollow. Um. Yeah. No, you just you just yeah. get the bus like it gives you plus two when you want it. Yeah, as you said, it's just an important card for the archetype. Yeah. All right. All right, I can talk about the synergy. So this synergizes with survivor blessings. Pairing up with another blessed token focused archetype allows for more access to adding and benefiting from blessed tokens. So if you have more ways to add and uh, more things that trigger when you draw a blessed token, the happier you or other players playing this archetype will be. This one's a little bit cool too, where the synergy kind of goes between players as well. Like if I'm playing like a succeed by X rogue build, Travis does usually doesn't give a crap about that, right? Like he's playing hand size, right? With this, with these archetypes, they kind of cross over into one another. Uh, speaking of the rogue, succeed by X, bless tokens add plus two to a test, making it more likely for you to succeed by X because normally it's succeed by two. Wow, it's almost like it was designed that way. Um, uh. Last thing it synergizes with is curse tokens, which sounds a bit crazy, yeah, but bless tokens have the chance of balancing out curse tokens, and additionally, you can also focus on the par paradox build, which is like the mystic side of this as well. And on that... There's also like oh. a couple of cards, like uh, Tempt Fate, that support both of them. Yes. And you can get like maximum value out of them by kind of dipping into both a little bit. Oh yeah. Travis. All right, everyone at home, I want you to guess who the investigator is for this deck, by the way. I'll give you a few seconds. Get your little th your thing shot up in your head, your idea. This is going to be the investigator. Travis, take it away. Burn, I thought of you when I made this deck. It it's the God Warrior Zoe. Because, uh, like, yeah, you could build Sister Mary and you just put all the blessed cards in the deck, but that's boring. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, we got uh, this is a nice, chunky 36 experience. Um, yeah. As usual, there's lots of things you could skip on to the later game and stuff, but uh, we got our Blessed Blade uh, for fighting with, as well as the Holy Spears. Um, and Book of Psalms helps is your other hand slot to help put bless tokens in the bag. We got some bandoliers, so that way you can carry your spear and like another thing too, your Bible too. You need that. Um, we got right of sanctification to afford the million assets that this, the nineteen assets that this deck is playing. That's a lot. <laughs> we got some holy rosaries for the reasons discussed previously. And Nephthys again, just like fantastic, especially if you're trying to do damage. Favor of the Sun makes Blessed Blade actually work. Um, Blessing of Isis, again, helps keep those tokens in the bag. And getting stars for extra damage on Zoe is like, whew. Especially when you can, like, improve the odds by putting the Favor of the Sun in. Yeah. That would uh, you also, like, there's no limit on them. So you could have, like, two Favor of the Suns in play, and you can just draw two Blessed tokens. <laughs> yeah do like a million damage <laughs> um we got the sacred covenant to put our stuff back in the bag of course righteous hunt for that mobility that we discussed before as well as blessing generation we have to work a little bit harder to get our blessing generation with the uh, plus tokens in the bag with zoe because we don't just get them for free like you do with sister mary uh radiant smite again you can use like she's got the same brain score that uh sister mary does so Ray and Smite with uh, your brains, pretty good deal. Or five with the Holy Rosary, like, hmm. Yep. Prepared for the worst and stand together are just our guardian staples here. Gotta find your weapons to kill stuff. Gotta have money to play them. And then we're only playing four off-color cards here. Two of them are beloved for those tests that you, you just gotta do. Mm -hmm. You know? Uh, again, and like with Favor of the Sun, like, you just do them. Yeah. <laughs> And then Ward of Radiance, again, because odds are, you know, you got seven, eight, nine tokens in the bag, or uh, your favor of the sun, you can just stop a bad token. Yeah. Or a bad card. Um, 
one thing that's really exciting about this deck is um, with Sister Mary, she's she's fun, and with the Bless archetype, that's nice. Um, but like, she's not like a consistent fighter in the way that a lot of other guardians are. And just seeing the Zoe deck, I'm like, oh yeah, <laughs> like this. Like, uh, I think Holy Rosary is like a priority upgrade for this deck as well, because that's a great way to ensure you're getting Bless tokens in the bag. Um, and because you'll be at five brain, which is fantastic. You get Nethys in play later on in the campaign. You're at six brain, as Travis said. You're Radiant Smite. You're now like attacking at nine, right? Like nothing will stop you. Like you are a god killing machine. Another thing that's great about Zoe with this deck, especially as Travis said, it's expensive as all hell, and her resource generation is really nice. Travis, I think this deck's a plus. Like it's great. Yeah. I think you both overlooked the best part about this deck, which is that you're playing Radiant Smite and your weakness is Smite the Wicked. Oh, <laughs> oh my god. You can actually Smite the Wicked. You have to, you have to save it for that. Yeah, you have to you do, do it. You I mean, actually, it. honestly, on that note, too, that's like some great, like, one action solving your weakness problem, mm -hmm. too. Like, yeah. yeah, no, Righteous Hunt is also really good for that. Yeah. Where, like, because it spawns the guy as far away from you as it can be. Yeah, this deck is uh, a Righteous Hunt this... will help you catch up to it. Yeah, this deck's a whole. I bet run. this could be like a. I think this deck could be a little bit rocky for the upgrades. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like it, yeah. you would start off a little bit slow, but uh, once you got there, you'd be like. Oh. Yeah, I think a big thing is that like, um, she has a good damage output. That even if your Holy Spear comes a little bit later, right? Like you'll still like, be able to hit and kill <laughs> things, right? No, yeah, like first. I think you want, I think you want the rosaries and the favor of the suns early. Yep. And then, um, depend if you have someone else who is like geared toward who can help you deal with monsters, picking up the nephthys as early isn't a bad choice. But yep. if you if you are like the fighter of the group, you need those holy spears early. Yeah. The yeah, holy like, spears and the radiant smites. Yeah. First, personally, yeah. I just pick up the. The Holy Spear is early because it doesn't matter if you got if you got the bless tokens to make them work. You just get to you get to fight at six and an extra damage. That is a good point too. It's pretty it's pretty serviceable even without all the cool synergies. All right, Brent, I and that's just deals damage too though. Yeah, this is true, but she needs she re actually requires the synergies in order to work, right? Yeah. As opposed to the spear, which is just like stabby stabby. Yeah, you got yes. you got pun you got punch number. We got punch number. So, Brent, I, I like, expect you yeah, to play yeah. this deck. Because, as Travis said, it's the true god warrior Zoe. It even got a special name in the Ark of DB thing. It did. It wasn't just I do blessing. like that you put blessed in brackets for me, though, Travis. You knew what I would be looking for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, we're going to be back in a few days to talk about the uh, Seeker Cursed Archetype. So, we'll see you then. Uh, and then we're going to be doing all of the Innsmouth Conspiracy uh, archetypes, as I said. So we'll see you guys in the near future. Have a good one. And as always, GG's.